I was at WEI, the sports radio station in Boston, for many years. Hosted the morning show there for, for, I was on the show for six, seven, whatever it was. Did it with Jerry for a couple of years. Before Bob Murchison came in, our last book was, the last pre-Murchison book, we, John, uh, uh, rather, just Jerry and I did a 13.7 rating. Ooh. Number one, I think of any show in the market in that book. Uh, Toucher and Rich were second with like a 10 and a half, still a really good number. We won by three points. <clears throat> Murchison happened. I leave. Uh, Jerry goes, Jerry and Mutt do their show. Their ratings, you know, by the time Jerry and Mutt left, the ratings have been sliced in half. Uh, they're even lower now. But this last ratings book, I don't know if you saw it or not, I did. is like, and nobody's right. Like, this is incredible. What was it, like a 12 3 or something? No. Well, oh, yeah. Well, 98.5 and 25.54, the station did a 15 2 share. Uh, here are the shows uh, Toucher and Rich did a 17. Greg Hill did a 4 9. So, again, four years ago, we beat them by three points. They're now losing by 12. Zolak and Bertrand did a 15 6. Andy Gresh and Rich Keefe did a 4. Felger and Maserati did a 19 5. Oh, shit. Kiss 108 did a, uh, rather, uh, WEI tie with Kiss 108. 25 54 men. Kiss 108 FM is literally geared toward. They'll tell, I mean, I know Matt Siegel. He's a friend. I, they, they're geared, geared toward women. Yeah. 18 like, year old girl. Like, yeah, 18 year old women. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, yeah. like it's, they play. Uh, you can go look up the last 10 songs they played, Dave. You know, yeah. you can go do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It'll be whoever. I don't even, I don't even know them. Yeah. And I, I feel like it's like soccer moms driving around to play music for their kids. For for their kids daughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Olivia Rodrigo right now, TikTok star. You right. know, yeah. shit you don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, and I can't even articulate, first of all, how much of a beating this is. It's like, I'll put it in Jared's vernacular. This would be like a... 26 to 2 baseball game. Ooh, wow. Like it's that it's that bad. Like it's that it is you can't even What do you attribute that to? Besides like the quality of shows, but I feel like are people because of the market shares people are not obviously listening to radio stations that well, just play the, music the, anymore. Right. Well, I think the cumin total is down anyway. I yeah. think cuz you know, every day somebody's leaving to go listen to something like this or something like you or something like you know, paint whatever, you know, 5 million other options now. But the shares are still the same. I think uh, I can't dis- I can't really understand why 985's numbers are so high. Like Falcon Mass is doing a 20, which is no radio station in a major market in the ball has ever done anything like that. If you were it's to guess, like how many average listeners do, do they get a day? A mm, couple hundred thousand, maybe. Like Felger Mass? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think. Yeah, th- two, three hundred thousand, I guess. But, you know, like I do think the residue of me leaving, I mean, it's not, it's, these are just numbers, it's just the facts. Me leaving. Not just that, but what it represented. Mm. What it represented was they gave in the Murchison, they gave him to the Globe, they gave him to the Red Sox, and they people just said, I'm not going back to this. Like, mm. I don't trust these guys. And then the product they put on, you put on Greg Hill and Rich Keefe and Andy Gresh and, like, Glenn, who I like, is 70 years old, and Lou and Craig. Like, people just, people have said, we, we are not going to listen to you anymore. And I don't know what point, I just don't know what the, 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 the line of demarcation is for Free Eye to say, we can't do it like this anymore i mean maybe they're making money i have no idea I, maybe they're making a little bit of money i know i know jerry talked about this too one of the last meetings we had was with tim murphy scumbag who i texted and you know he didn't respond but i just laughed at him i sent him all the ratings like you're a fucking loser yesterday uh two days ago, two days ago think, yeah he sat down with jerry and i before i left you know before i got out of there he's like you guys don't understand we don't care about ratings anymore we don't want to get in trouble we'd rather finish in eighth place with no trouble than first place like you guys are with all kinds of trouble Seriously? This is the second guy in the second right guy in the company. And he's still there. He's still there. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. We call him. Uh, <laughs> he won't answer, I don't think. Even but, if that was true, you don't tell your talent that because you want them to be competitive. Don't well, you? well, I think we're already so far down the Murchison line yeah. that they weren't even thinking like that. But I said to Tim, I said, that's great. I said, I don't have trouble bonuses. I have ratings bonuses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And big ones. Like, you know, you want to just, I said to them, you know, and I wouldn't be able to do this, but I said, if you give me every bonus dollar right now for the rest of my contract, then fine. We yeah, we'll keep it in trouble, yeah. But I wouldn't be able to do that. But it didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Let's see what he has to say. He that won't was, answer. That was a wild he time won't have in my number. sports radio I'm history. sending you your number. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. So he might answer because he doesn't have my number. I got you. One second. What, what with us and those guys and stuff? Yeah. Crazy. Like I, wasn't that there was one point. One second, dude. Where, uh, like, Toucher and Rich, like, we're... we're it was it was kind of like when when WWE and WCW were crossing over at one point, right? Like at the, for the longest time, the two stations never acknowledged each other, 
and then Toucher and Rich, they were coming at you, and you were going over there to right. come at Felger. Like, that was probably, like, the, the peak of entertainment for, it was fun. for it, sports radio. Well, I did that at the beginning when I first started with John and Jerry. They were getting killed by Toucher and Rich. They were losing by five, six points. It doesn't seem that bad now, but yeah, then. Yeah. And Jason Wolf, the program director, said, you can't say their names. And I was like, but why? Everyone yeah. knows that they're killing us. Everyone knows. He's like, well, you can't say that. Well, I'm going to. It's stupid. It's yeah. embarrassing. So. You were basically like, you know what? You you were the first guy to kind of bring like a little bit of kayfabe to sports radio in Boston, where they they were kind of they were like, wait, is this is this real? Like they they weren't having fun with it. Right. Which if they had fun with it, then I, I feel like it helps both sides. And if they, if and you weren't gone, disruptive, it would have been gone a long time. Oh, ago. absolutely. Like if you were just, I think even Jerry knows that. Like yeah. they, that show was dead. I came, the ratings went way up. You know, it took a while, but way up. I left, the, the ratings went way down. And guys like Chad Finn will never write about it. I saw people tweeting. Some Most people thought were, you know, supportive. But some were like, why do you keep doing this? I tweeted. I was like, because I fucking hate them. Like, I'm not going to stop doing this. I'm mm-hmm. not going to. I'm going to be petty about it. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know, and I have friends there and I feel bad for them. You know, but it's what it some of those guys I still talk to. And those guys, you know, aren't thrilled with what's going on in that building either. You know, and so. but why don't they just leave? Because they have families and they have houses in Chelmsford, and you know they're get a job at they have other the they have little Manansky's. I, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, Mike, yeah, we got yeah, you're the program job. director. That's true. <laughs> Jeez, was that? Hey, you didn't hear uh, Mutt yesterday with Sam Kennedy? Oh, I felt bad for. Uh, uh, there's right. nothing Mutt can do about. It. He's filling in for Greg Hill. What is he going to do? Yeah, you know, right. they, but I mean, it's a bad look when they have Sam Kennedy on the day after. At least he's story. trying to be self-deprecating about it. He's having fun with it to some extent, I guess. Yeah. But it's it's an incredible story. I mean, it's it's amazing. And these people still stay. And, you know, the guy in charge of it now is this guy, Tim Clark, who is a typical... We, we asked him to come on, right? We did. I left a voicemail. How'd it go? He had no response? He did not get back to me. Typical Radio Johnny shithead, blankhead, nothing, who, you know, is telling everybody that Twitch is going to save the station. It's not. I mean, I, we'll, play, we'll, we'll play the sound from Mike on Monday because he, he'll like hearing it too. But it's... I, I, who's He's got that? a great idea for Gresh to take on. You hear some of this ideas? No. We have in many of our markets, the Humane Society comes, comes in once a week with a dog or a pet that, uh, you know, that is up for adoption. And the midday jock takes a picture with the dog of the week and posts that okay, on I can't, Facebook. I can't, I get and mad. I, I get, I get, I get so angry when I hear this. Like I built that fucking place back up. And like, and now you have the guy running in charge of his ideas, Andy Gresh, taking a picture with a fucking dog. Yeah. When I'm in my car. I'm like, oh, you know, this show sucks. But the guy took a picture with a dog the other day. So I'm going to listen to it. Yeah. And, and, and you know. Support the advertisers. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know how you help that problem, though, because I feel like they've they've done it. Who is the dude that totally flopped from Pittsburgh? Tim Salk. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Tim no, Benz. no. Tim Benz. Mike Salk's the guy who flopped from Seattle. Yeah. I was thinking of, I was thinking of Salk, though. Yeah, yeah. So they bring in people from other markets to try and be, like, fresh and new. And, like, this guy's brand new. Check him out. That doesn't work. And, and that doesn't work. And then they bring back someone like Gresh, and they, they move. Um, Dale? What's his name? No. The morning guy. Where? Which our station? Yeah. Greg Hill? Yeah, yeah. So they bring in like oh, Greg oh, Hill yeah, yeah. and it's like he's a familiar face. Yeah, but those and show but those guys stink. Like that's got, what I'm saying. Like no, nothing works. Like who's out there that could just I wipe? sound like an asshole. There's only, when I there's, say only this. there's only one per, like, I'm not saying this there's only one person who could go to a show right now in Boston and would go to number one right away. Kurt Me. Minahan. Me. Like that's this it. that's not even if I if I went in the afternoons at EI, I never would. And they let me pick my show. Like, would I beat Felger Maserati right away? No. Would it be damn competitive after like a year? Fucking oh, yeah. yes, it would. Yeah. Of course it would. Mm-hmm. We're going to say, Dave. But even in that situation, like you're popular with the crowd and you're making the other shows better. You're telling people to listen to Dale and Holly. You're telling people to listen to OMF, which helps the entire station. Of course, the numbers When you're good. gone, they're fucked. There's right. no way to come back from it. That's no. it. And, and I do think a lot of people when I left and even someone Jerry left were like, nope. I mean, these guys, they, 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 they bowed. They fucking gave in. We're good. We're all set. Well, Jerry's was loyalty. Yours was like was absolutely disruption. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. I have a pretty loyal fan base. Yeah. And I dragged him. I dragged him over here with me. And it's I dragged, crazy. And I drag him over there. Like you know, what's yeah. crazy? That, like how many fucking people like come up to me in public about your show? That's well, great. It is great. If you could hand pick one person in in the Boston media market to co-host a show with, who would you pick? Not kind of like you. You're saying like in the radio right now, or no? You can. You're not I mean, going we, to we, pick we, me. But we co-host you... a show together once a week, basically. You normally. You and I. Yeah, we'd be fine. Sure. Yeah. No, I, I think that we're good together. But I just you wouldn't. To, I'm I, saying like if if nobody if can he, be. I wouldn't want anybody to be my co-host. Like I'm done with that. You know what I mean? Like I don't want this. I don't want anybody to be fifty percent. I mean, of the show. like this role. Like uh, there, there's someone else sitting off to the side. You can pick Blind Mike. You could pick me. But I'm oh, t- no, I'm no, thinking no. like 
Boston outside of, outside of this world. They're saying Boston, would, Boston media market. Probably Jim Murray, I yeah, guess. Jim you would probably or Mutt, I guess. You pick Mutt. I love Mutt. Like you know, Mutt's I, very sporty though. I just yeah, but he doesn't have to be. I just want to have somebody I like being around. I Easy, love easier Mutt. to pick on Mutt than Jim Murray. I yeah, said, yeah. I don't know if Jim's. Yeah. Good, I don't know how good Jim would be at that. I, I can't. I, I can't. But I do think it's time for scenario where that's happening. It's time for Jim Murray to spread his wings, in my opinion. I told him that. Where do you think he should go here? No, no, no. But I'm just saying that like, he's the third guy on the. It's wildly successful. I'm sure he's doing very well. But he must be itching to do more. I would think. Maybe not. Maybe he's happy. I don't know. I'm sure he is happy. I hope he is. He's a great guy. I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm glad. That I'm, and I'm believing. There's no bigger 985 fan than me. I, 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 he's I, done I, all sorts of radio though. Like that's the thing. Oh he, yeah, he's, he, he's found a great spot. Yeah, he he's a he's a guy that's kind of ventured through multi layers of of radio. And I think I think he'd love podcasting, but I don't know that Sports Hub would. Even he's a, I think he's a radio him. guy. He's yeah. a radio guy, yeah. but he could. Yeah. I, well, I reached out to him when Steve left. He was one of the first guys I reached out to produce the show. Really? Yeah. 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 Said, said no. He said, well, obviously he said no. Look what I'm stuck with. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been good. Uh, he well, absolutely been, I think it would have been interesting. Yeah, I think it would have been, been different. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I'll say this. Uh, if EEI wants me to, I'll go in there, fill in for anybody for a day, do a show. <laughs> Here's the deal. I won't break any FCC rules, yep. but I get to say what I want. Four hours. Here's what you get. Buzz like you've never had. Right. And the thirty share in that in that day on that in that time slot. Mm. So Minimum. There's yeah. There's the there's the invitation. You know they won't do it. I feel like most of the people that you made enemies out of have, have since moved on. There. Uh yeah. I mean the only person I hate there is Chris Curtis now, just because he's so disloyal. But there's nobody there I really hate. Like I don't hate Greg Gill. I don't care. You know his show stinks, but he's never done anything to me. Yeah. Andy Gresh was always an asshole to me, but I don't know him. Rich Keefe is a zero. And I like Glenn and Christian Lewin. I love Mutt. I mean, I hate management. I thought, I thought you didn't get along with Christian. No, we had a fight, but we get along fine. I mean, I never talked to him, but we get, if I saw him now, we'd, we'd, it'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for them, but the show, the show that stinks. That is funny, the, yeah. but that just proves how it's all ego-based with you, at least, because they will not, I mean, obviously, they're not going to take you up of on that offer. Not. No, but it's a smart thing to take up, right? Well, but then you bring Murchison back. 